Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dimitri and this is MG Owners Australia and today I will go off topic a little bit and talk to you about conversion of an SUV into an urban camper. What do I mean by urban camping? Let's define it straight away before you decide if it's for you or if it's not for you. Urban camping is not a full-on camping. It's something where you have to sleep in your car basically in an urban area rather than camp properly with a tent with all sorts of different amenities and other kind of stuff. We're not talking about tent-based camping. We're talking about, I don't know, a night that you need to spend when you drive between one city to another in a slightly better conditions than just ad hoc, throw a pillow, lean back and, and sleep. So we're talking about no-build conversion. If you look on YouTube, there are people who convert their vans and their SUVs into kind of part-time slash full-time camping, sleep-in, live-in type of vehicles. This is not that kind of video. I'm not an expert. I'm not pretending to be. However, this is an LDV D90, Maxxis D90, MG Gloucester, whatever this car is marketed as in your part of the world. So for those of you who have this car or considering a cheap, big SUV with that type of use case in mind that you need to camp in it either by yourself or with your family whatever your use case is I have done my research I can save you a little bit of time on your research I can tell you what I found out and it's kind of exciting because conversion in its bare bones way to enable you sleeping in the car living a little bit in the car as you travel around as you camping as you are on very very budget holidays is very possible in this vehicle so this video is going to show you the whole process everything I've done and running ahead of myself again if you're still listening to me thank you give the video a like this whole conversion no build conversion will cost you under 200 Australian dollars that is very 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 cheap we will need to first address two main points that will enable this camping element for you first you need something to sleep on and second you need good cover from the light and prying eyes of people since you might be parked in urban areas LDV D90 offers very roughly about 190 by 120 centimeters relatively flat surface for your improvised bed area when you put down the third and second rows of seats. Plenty of space for a properly large sized mattress or a more permanently built bed platform. I suggest that you buy a folding mattress as close to the right size of your vehicle, obviously. In my case of LDV D90, a Bedra double bed sized foldable mattress from eBay was a perfect choice. Time will tell, obviously, the quality of the mattress and how long the memory foam stays responsive for, as normally you get what you pay for. And this solution was rather cheap by our Australian price standards anyway. I got mine for roughly 135 Australian dollars delivered to my door. As its memory foam based mattress, even if the sizing of certain elements of the boot area of LDV D90 would not be a perfect match, we are off by about, I don't know, one, between one and three centimeters here and there, for example, in the wheel arch areas. But you, the foam based mattress can still be slightly kind of forced and fit in when necessary. So it, it is honestly, in my opinion, not a problem whatsoever. This particular mattress created a pretty damn good and budget sleeping platform for potentially two people camping or just spending one night outdoors. First known issue is that this kind of mattress uh, layout in the car, if you go this way, there is basically no space left for any other substantial luggage or storage, such as boxes with food, clothing or a power generator. There is some small space between the front seats, the back of the front seats, and the folded back seat, uh, where the folded back seat begins. You could, I suppose, squeeze some essentials under there, um, and those might be okay for a sh very short-term stay for one person, which might be the use case for my intermittent camping, but it won't be enough for you if there are two of you, or if your camping stay is more long-term, in my opinion anyway. Uh, in that case, you'd probably need to research further and invest in a roof rack or storage container of sorts that is fitted to the roof. I am not at that stage yet, but I acknowledge that this is probably where it might need to go for you. Secondly, it's not a minivan. 
but an SUV. And I don't know if most of other SUVs would have similar problem. Please share in the comments down below if you have insights into that. My LDV D90 definitely has this problem. There is a slight sloping effect uh, when you folded back the seats, put the mattress on and tried to lie down full length, kind of stretching lengthwise as you lie down. If you like relax for the night or whatever your other use case might be, such as re reading a book or watching a movie. Um, you will feel like you're on a bit of a slope down towards the tailgate. Your legs will feel like they're a bit down, which is not super annoying, but definitely noticeable enough for you potentially to consider leveling out this platform before trying to sleep like this in the car long term. In my humble opinion anyway, let me know if you've experienced anything like that and what kind of leveling out solution did you use, if any, other than obviously cut a sheet of wood to size and use it as a proper completely flat platform for the mattress to rest on but that goes into the build conversion territory this is a no build conversion so next point that you will need to evidently address uh, in your no build suv camper are the windows and their shading even when the windows are tinted unless there is some insanely dark privacy tinting that i'm yet to see for myself before thinking that it's sufficient on its own, the light will come into the car. And while not many passers-by might make an extra effort to look right into your car, kind of putting their eyes straight to the window, you yourself will be disturbed by the daylight and most importantly, the headlights of the cars driving by. You can't do much, you know, about blocking out the noise, let's say, if you've parked for the night in an urban busy area. Busy areas are probably a bad idea in general, but you can and should block out the light. End of the story. So for the front of the car, we will use a cheap and cheerful standard foldable sun protection reflecting panel, which are a dime a dozen, honestly, and realistically, you could probably get one off eBay for probably $10 Australian now. I got mine for about that price a while ago, so I didn't specifically look for one for this particular SUV conversion, but I'm sure you won't struggle to find one, okay? This frontal panel will A, be visually acceptable when people and cars pass by, as a lot of people parking their cars just on the side of the road do that, especially in sunny places like Australia, especially in summer. This would hardly raise any concerns or queries, and B, it will block out a lot of the light and general field of view from the passers-by and majority of cars driving by, since the windshield is never tinted either. So a good blocking of the sunlight is absolutely necessary here, and this is a very, very easy solution, I think, that would work here fantastically well. Side and rear window is where the real work will be for you in this conversion, as while there are different types of rear window shades for babies and that kind of stuff you could research of course and buy those um, I bet none of them will be perfectly fit to size or look subtle enough for you to remain in relative stealth mode keyword here is relative this is not a full-blown stealth conversion so here's what I've done anyway uh, as a base for those uh, you know let's call them window patches I went to one of the storage places around Sydney storage King in my case but you could go anywhere else and bought one of those large boxes that would offer me enough of solid cardboard panel space to cut out the patches. I think I paid about $10 in the shop, but I think they're even cheaper online right now for a box, which gave me enough cardboard for all the four patches that I've went with so far. And I even still have half of that box left spare because this particular box comes in two halves. So I've, I've only cut up one half and I'll probably use the remaining half, the second half, for the front side window, windows or the back window, which I have not addressed yet as I didn't see honestly the need for that personally. But I'll see how I go. Let me get to that point later. So in my view, these side window patches or covers need to serve two purposes. First, obviously to reflect the sunlight in brightly lit areas such as camping at the beach in the middle of summer or under any other conditions when you need to take a nap in your car and stealthy appearance is not a concern for you so you don't mind your windows looking shiny and second the alternate mode that makes the window look dark 
not raising any interests from passers-by and letting you sleep without anyone but the most prying people that always where is where there is a will there is always a way right but uh, i think it's a minuscule percentage and probability is very very low that anyone will even notice that you're there so to address the point number one i went back to ebay and found what has been referred to during my research on youtube here as reflectix insulation material at apparently reflectix is known everywhere else in the world but in australia we just go for foil bubble wrap i bought mine for 17 dollars it's a fairly generous roll of this bubble wrap thing and it's more than enough more than sufficient um, this wrap is not solid enough though by itself to be useful so when you roll it out it's kind of flimsy it, it kind of is rather thin so you would need to glue it to the cardboard cutout you see where i'm going with this so we have the cardboard and we have the foil bubble wrap now i already had a glue stick from officeworks and some sticky tape that I would use to kind of insulate the edges of these cutouts uh, a little later. So I took a few A4 sized paper sheets, put them side by side, attached them to each other with a sticky tape. So I basically created a big paper panel. Why? Because the windows of LDVD90 and possibly your SUV are rather large. So it, it would be hard for you to find a, a, a big enough yet flexible enough piece of paper, unless you can, um, to trace the edges of the car window. It is done from the inside. So you go on, on the inside, you try to place this thing as firmly as you can towards the window edges as I do here, and you trace them with a pencil or with a pen to make a template for the window patch cutout. Yeah. Since I was worried uh, so far only about the large rear door windows and the little more oval shaped windows towards the tailgate of LDVD90, I've actually managed to work with this one big sheet of paper to trace both of those window sizes. Thankfully, obviously, they are the same on both sides of the car, right? So using the same template, I've done it all with one sheet. First, the large window, obviously, using one size of the paper sheet and then cutting it to the smaller size once um, once I was done with the first one. Once I was finished with the first two door windows, I've traced the smaller oval windows on the other side and cut the paper again. So it was a bit fiddly, I'll be honest, but still felt quite rational in terms of the smallish amount of resources and effort it took me overall. Once you have your paper template, put it on top of the cardboard, trace around it with a pen or a, some form of a... Um, you know pencil and then cut out using large scissors because the cardboard is relatively thick this is going to be a little bit of an effort to do right and not to mess things up such as not letting the cardboard bend too much so i had to pay attention to that but if i manage to do it all uh, in about three hours end to end yes it's three hours but it's a lot of work uh, so will you manage to do it not a problem it, you, like if i did it you'll do it so then I've cut out the foil bubble wrap exactly the same way and glued it onto the cardboard cutouts because the glue stick is not the strongest, uh, the strongest glue out there, but quite convenient. So I still think it's a good solution. Um, it would not offer a very seamless attachment to the edges of this cardboard cutout, if you know what I mean. So that is the reason why I personally decided to kind of insulate and also use a wider sticky tape to cover up those edges from the window moisture and just to prevent bubble wrap from coming off when I push and then take out these window covers from where they need to be fit into place as they obviously need to be sized to fit quite firmly and to hold in place on their own not needing any other support which worked as intended almost perfectly almost is the keyword I'll tell you why in a minute so the problems yeah so there are just like with the mattress there are some imperfections they're not real problems they're just little imperfections for you to be aware of and maybe try and optimize or just be aware of so first make sure that you cut out the cardboard patches rather generously even if they are too big to fit uh, you know perfectly uh, into like compared to your paper-based initial template you want the patch to be 
sufficient. You want it to fit in firmly and you can always use the scissors then to kind of trim it a little bit once you then start measuring it in the window before you continue with any form of gluing on of the bubble wrap or anything like that. You cut it out, you bring it back to the car, you try to fit it back in and you pay attention and you see where slight further adjustments with your with the scissors are required but it needs to be firm i as you can see haven't done the most amazing job there with the edges um, but i think it's still pretty good and you know you can obviously do better i'm sure on the topic of cutouts also don't make them too small don't make them too big, don't make them too small. I've messed up a little bit on one of the smaller oval window covers, making it a bit too small. And now while one of them is holding in place, it still tends to fall out. It's a bit weak there in terms of holding on its own, um, unless I push it in really, really firmly. So I could have probably done with a few millimeters here and there more on this particular patch, but this is what it is. Now, second, second thing here to keep in mind is that for stealth mode like what i've what i've done is i've decided to buy some cheap black spray paint from bunnings which is an australian hardware store chain in case you're not a local and i've painted the backs of those patches putting them on my lawn and then just putting them out there to dry yeah which went okay i thought i can't particularly complain but the problem is it became the problem became evident once I started doing it already and all I can do here is just report it to you um, so firstly it's very hard to spray to apply the spray paint to a piece of cardboard perfectly evenly without any smudges or drips or fades of color and that kind of stuff because it's cardboard it absorbs it absorbs the paint you need to do several probably goes and i did, did only one go of coating of this with the paint i might do another one later if this looks horrible but uh, you know um, this this is just something for you to probably take into consideration and, and learn from another thing is that unless you have a perfect surface to paint those patches on and then leave them there laying horizontally uh, you will be in my situation where I didn't and I ended up with a little bit of these drips kind of thing and this a little patchy not very perfect appearance also my sticky tape work the, so the sticky tape that I've used here to insulate the window patch edges I've put it on too thick so essentially if you do that what I did please do not put it so thick in my opinion as when you start painting it like I did it created this really thick really obvious black border that stands out too much to count for a stealth mode of any kind really I know that some properly experienced campers actually recommend not using paint at all and instead using sometimes sewing on sometimes gluing on black cloth to create a more even and natural stealth patch look which absolutely would work better I have no doubt about that but it when I even considered it it meant a lot more involved work for me to go down that path and I don't live in my car and I don't camp regularly enough yet anyway to justify this which is why I didn't do it and yeah look it's not a perfect solution but yeah consider it uh, con consider it for yourself what works better for you so take this recommendation and walk through for what it's worth yeah it's not necessarily the best way but it's a way okay so i hope it helps you my friends or at least offers you a perspective and some learnings that you could either take or improve straight away capitalize on not going down the path that i took perhaps if you don't think that this is not good enough I think it's good enough for a very occasional kind of night under the stars or something like that um, so I think that as a base for urban camping for urban conversion of an urban camper based on an SUV SUV chassis such as LDV D90 I think this works pretty well and I am going to test it out and I am going to share my further impressions with you especially if you are interested this was an experimental topic for my channel it is not something that I typically talk about and it's not something that I'm an expert in. But I do hope that you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like if you did. Definitely leave a comment. What are your thoughts about this? Especially if you're one of my regulars, I want to hear from you. But every new passerby and addition to our little club of car owners in Australia are always very, very welcome.